Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our class on hitting the sweet spot for cryptocurrency trading. Now, when traders speak about high probability trading techniques, they are referring to specific techniques and strategies that can be employed to achieve a solid edge in the market. An edge is simply a statistical significant trade expectancy that when applied over a series of trades, you will yield positive results. In other words, if you use this strategy 10 times, seven of those might be losers, three of those might be winners, but over time, you would have found that you would have made more profit than you would have lost. Or statistically, if you use this trade over 200 times, you would have found that the more you use this trade, the more statistically it gave you positive results. But ultimately, what you're looking for is hitting this sweet spot or a trigger. And sweet spots and triggers are used in every strategy, every type of setup. Now, keep in mind when we're trading cryptocurrency, we have, it's a lot different than Forex or CFD trading or stock trading or indices or even commodities because no matter what people want to convince you, there is no economic ties. To cryptocurrency, not if the economy is going good or bad, not if we have a dead president, we have an assassinated leader, no matter whether we have a war in the Gulf or an oil tanker explodes. Cryptocurrency probably won't even change if Russia invades the Ukraine because it's not tied to geopolitical stress. It's not tied to economic results. It's not even tried tied to political policy, except when regulators step into the cryptocurrency market. Of course, if China bans cryptocurrency, it's going to have an effect on the market. But it's not China affecting their economic situation, not an economic report, it's a news headline. So forget the news though, social media is what affects cryptocurrency. Okay, it's our response to what's going on in the world. How many headlines? How many, what's the name from Tesla? You know, how many times can he you know, blurt something out in the market and affect it? But ultimately on the whole, cryptocurrency is in a world to its own. Now, most technical analysis will help you with cryptocurrency. Now, some traders find the, this edge through technical analysis, while other traders try, try to find it through fundamental analysis. And like I said, there's really no fundamental analysis we can apply here. Additionally, there are groups of traders known as high frequency traders that rely on the speed of execution as their primary edge. Now there used to be, and there's still a little bit today in the market, cryptocurrency arbitrage, where you would buy a cryptocurrency uh, say from a slower exchange in the U.S. that has slower prices, and sell it really quickly to a, an, a through an exchange in South Korea, be, and just taking advantage of the price difference because they're not catching up. But arbitrage is an interesting way, but it's a very unique way of, of trading. Each trader must evaluate their own personal skill set and find their own trading edge if they're to achieve long-term goals. Now. For me, I'm a triangle trader, a pattern trader, primarily triangles, and setups using support and resistance. Okay, I'm a firm believer in support and resistance. Trends and trend lines are one thing, but breakouts of triangle patterns, breakouts of patterns, or say a doji appearing directly on a support and resistance line, they're all part of my unique trading setup, so to speak. But as a matter of interest, there are only two primary types of trading styles that are most often applied to market speculation. The first is trend following approach, and the second is a contrarian approach. The trend following or trend trading methodology focuses on finding high probability trade setups that are aligned in the direction of the larger trend. The trend trader understands the importance of following the path of least resistance. The focus here is to follow the current momentum of the market and ride the underlying trend for as long as the market can sustain it. Alternatively, a contrarian or means reversion approach to market analysis seeks to find market extremes and then 
fade the trade action or trade the trade price action as it begins to snap back towards equilibrium. Now, all of us understand, or hopefully, that market momentum is ultimately important because it's like a hamster in a cage. Hamster in his cage has a little wheel. And we get amazed sometimes, like when we were all kids, watching that hamster run around that wheel for hours and hours and hours as a cage. You wonder why he doesn't exhaust himself. Now, that little hamster gets on that wheel and it takes him all of his energy to get that wheel started. And he's puffing and puffing and it's starting to turn and it's turning a little bit more. But once he gets that steady movement of turning, he's exerting less energy and the wheel is taking it because he's built that momentum. And the same is true in the market. It's very hard to start a price action one way or another. Once the market starts moving, it has momentum. And that momentum will continue pulling traders in to push that price in that direction. Now, there are certain points where the market takes all oh, that hamster gets tired. He, you know, he, he can't stop because the wheel's still turning, but he can stop running as fast and that wheel will slow down. But as long as the wheel's turning, he can pick up that momentum again very quickly and keep getting it back to its maximum. Okay. Now, for him to stop that wheel or change direction it takes a lot of momentum and it doesn't happen quickly. He may get it back into that slowing down stage where it's moving sideways, but to slow it down and get it to stop and then reverse that direction takes a lot of work and energy also. And again, this is true with the markets. When we have a price moving one way or another, it's easier to continue that price movement. And these are trending phases. And then the other phases are the mean reversion phases. So then a question, a natural question arises. Should I focus on trend trading or mean reversal? To be honest with you, I do both. I don't look at a hardcore set of rules, especially with cryptocurrency. What I'm looking for is a trade set up to alert me to something. And then I'm looking to find what I call the sweet spot or the decision maker. It's a price or an action that will make me make a move. It's where I'm going to execute a trade. Okay, so the answer to the question isn't always clear. The reason being that there are certain market conditions that favor a trend following approach and other market conditions that favor a mean reversion methodology. It is our job as traders to evaluate the current market regime to decipher which model would provide the highest probability trading application at that specific time. So what we're looking for are decision triggers or sweet spots. The market is basically in constant change and each moment offers the potential for a new setup. Many of these moments However, do not provide an edge to the trader. These setups do not offer a distinct advantage and have a low probability of success. So you can sit for hours looking at trade setups, but you still need, number one, that high probability trade, and you need that trigger or sweet spot to make you jump into action. Putting your stop loss, figuring out what your, your target point is, understanding and, and using your, your risk management and risk reward ratio, that's easy. Okay. It's a, what, what's going to trigger your trade? What's going to make you push that button and make that trade? Okay. That's what's important, not getting you to do something. What is the sweet spot you're looking for or what is the trigger you're looking for that will say, okay, it's now time to execute that trade or yeah, the trade setup in, is all developed and it's exactly what, but it's not a high probability trade. I can't get in the market. There's not a sweet spot to jump in the market. So setups with high probabilities of success are pretty scarce. A Forex trader and a CFD trader and a cryptocurrency trader must wait patiently for these setups to occur. Like a tiger waiting for its prey and then execute with discipline 
when the movement arrives. But how does a trader recognize these moments of waiting and executing? This is when introducing the concept of decision spots and triggers are crucial. Now, a trend line represents decision spots and lines in the sand. When price is not at a trend line, then it is in the middle of nowhere. When price is at a decision spot, there's a higher chance of finding a trade setup with a higher probability of success. When price is in the middle, there's no, there's no need for you to be wasting your time. So waiting for these lines in the sand. Decision spots are important and key levels of a time frame of your choice. Identifying decision spots allows traders to ignore price action in the middle of nowhere and wait for the price to reach the lines. You know, it's like I look for my triangle patterns all the time. But when a price is in the way in the middle of a triangle, even though I see the triangle format, and it's not near a support or resistance level, there's no trade that's going to happen for me. I'm going to have to wait. I'm going to have to be that tiger waiting to press. But what and when am I going to jump? So using high probability trading strategies has enormous advantage for trading psychology. First of all, it does not cost a trader any money. And this is one of the things you have to remember. Not making a trade doesn't cost you a penny. Okay. You're not losing money. You're not making money. You're doing nothing. And it's not like times you can pass you, you'll never get it back again. It's not like, I missed that trade, so I didn't make $10,000. No. It's not like that house came on the market and it's the perfect house. And because you didn't jump on it, somebody else bought it and that's the end of it. No. Nope. The market offers you continuous trading. There's always something available. There's always some setup that's available. There's always some probability that's available. Okay. So never think about missing. And thinking about not making a trade is more important than making a trade. Because it doesn't cost you any money. What's the most important thing you can do about trading is risk management and risk reward understanding stop losses and how to exit a market, you know, your exit strategy. Okay. Now, most importantly, traders do not have to worry about missing setups, chasing a setup, entering a setup too soon. It's enormously helpful to remain patient and keep the discipline needed for succeeding in a trade. So once you set or once you see a potential of a setup, you know, you see the triangle forming, you see those line of resistance support up and below the levels. Okay, I can say, all right, when it reaches here and does this at that price, that's my trigger. Okay. I don't need to do anything else. I need to wait for my trade to get triggered. Or whenever it hits this particular price, that's my sweet spot. Okay, now they're different. Triggers are more or less patterns, something happening, maybe a doji and two candles or, a, you know, a, a bear reversal or a breakout of the triangle where a, a sweet spot is a price. Okay. Now, traders can avoid revenge trading by keeping a cool mindset. Taking too many doubtful trades can easily lead to over trading and which leads you to a slippery slope. So waiting for the action of the trigger. The trigger is the signal of interesting of interest a trader is waiting for. The trader has been patiently waiting for the price to move to one of their decision spots. And now that the price has reached it, now what? Whoa, execute, execute, execute. So how and when to trade? This is what the trigger solves. It's basically a call to action. The trigger provides confirmation on how to trade at a decision level. It provides clues whether a trader will go long or go short. In other words, whether this can take a break or a bounce. In other words, you're moving up to support and resistance level. If it breaks the support level or it bounces off, what is it going to do? What are you going to do? Okay. Now, you can see on my chart, we have the pin bar reversal at an important resistance level. We have a breakout candle at a resistance level. We have bullish and bearish bounces. You decide what your triggers are, okay? Not wait for something to happen on a chart, say, oh, that's my trigger. No, 
you decide what your triggers are and what starts you to trade. Each trader can choose from their own indicators, tools, patterns, trends, support, and resistance for the role of decision spots and triggers. There's no right or wrong method, and you should pick something which is like to you, which you like to use. Like for instance, in my triangle breakout strategy, I need my what I call my breakout candle when it breaks out. I need my confirmation candle, and then I trade on the third candle. Okay, that is my decision trigger because if that second candle doesn't stay outside of the first, the breakout candle goes back in no trading. If the third candle goes back in the triangle, or it doesn't ever break the the height of or the top of the bottom of the previous candle. No trade, no no triggers been action. So no trade was made. That is my trigger for that setup. So for decision spots, the one tool I use is a strike trigger candle and a trend line. Runners up are support and resistance patterns and moving averages. Okay, so you have to decide what is your trigger. Okay, too many people want to trade a setup and when the setup happens, they just jump in the market. No. Decide ahead of time what your sweet spot is or what your trigger is for that particular trade or that particular setup and wait for that trigger to tell you to do something. So for triggers, my number one tool is candlesticks and candlestick patterns. Runner up or fractals and trade line, trend lines. So again, I showed you in that previous uh, JPEG, the pin bar setup and a pin bar at a trend line. A breakout candle through the trend line and a breakout trade. Okay. Traders use different tools and indicators for each of the two roles. And then the other thing that's important is open space. What a lot of traders forget about is they see their setup happening, they get their decision or their trigger, but your decision and trigger should be at a point okay, where the price has a lot of available movement. Okay, Whether it's a buy or a sell, if you have a buy and you only have a little bit of space to move because you have a major Fibonacci level, you have a resistance level, whatever it may be, forget it because you don't have wide open space. You need the potential for that your trade to be able to run a long distance. Opening a trade just because it fits your support and resistance, just because it fits your risk management, just because you can set up your stop loss, just because your target point can be three times your risk management, doesn't mean it has enough room to run. So the best opportunities are called sweet spots or areas where the strong confluence of levels exists and wide open space is present. Wide open. Confluence zones are the best decision spots available because it increases the probability of a trade setup succeeding. This happens because more support or resistance is available in the decision area, which makes the decision spot more valuable compared to the decision spot with no confluence. Wide open spaces, potential movement price can make after reaching the confluence zone upon break or bounce before hitting another decision spot. The more space, the better, as it allows the trade to have more options regarding exits. And keep in mind, exits are as important as entries. Because remember, you don't make any money until you exit a trade. Until you actually make a trade, you're on the sidelines. You've got no skin in the game so to speak once you enter a trade you have your skin in the game but you have no profit and no loss until you exit that trade so exit is very important so other sweet spots can be identified by using the concept of, of impulse and correction waves price is always in either of the two and it depends on the strategy for each one is better for you if price action trading is the study of price movements, price action trend trading is the study of trends. Traders can you make use of several trade trading techniques to spot and follow price action trends, such as the head and shoulders and trade reversal. This is a great trading tool for new traders as it allows them to effectively learn from more experienced peers by chasing price action trends as they become visible. 
in the screen chart I'm going to show you, about, you would buy a position to benefit with the green and uptrends or sell with a position to in the reds. Okay. But you have to then decide when you see reds in a green, that's not a, a decision to necessarily buy. You want to have to know what your trigger is or what your sweet spot is when you would want to enter that trade. So trend following retracement entries. This is a relatively simple price action strategy whereby the trader simply follows the existing trade. If a price is on a clear downtrend with lower highs being consistently created, the trader might look to take a short position. If prices are rising incrementally with the highs and lows trending increasing higher, then a trader might want to buy in. Okay. So the trend following retracement entry is quite easy. Again, you need to figure your trigger, but you can use your trend line for a trigger. Now look at this, price is moving up and up and up. It retraces here below the trend line and it breaks back above the trend line and starts moving. This would have been a very good entry if you would have had a sweet spot to enter this trade. And then of course you have trend following breakout entry. This trend tracks any major movement in the market under the assumption that after a price spike, a retracement will follow. If the market moves outside a defined support and resistance level, it's known as a breakout. Traders can use it as a signal to act, taking a long position of the stock or the cryptocurrency is trending upwards or breaking breaks above the resistance line or a short position if it moves below the 